So I got to check out Far Cry 5 last week and not just your typical go and play the game. Ubisoft brought us out to experience the game. So we're out in California. We, we're at this ranch. Yes, a ranch uh, with horses, barn stables, more horses, some hay um, to give us the experience of what uh, Far Cry 5 is all about. The gameplay, the game now takes place in Montana. There's this crazy cult called Eden's Gate and uh, they've also got uh, a crazy cult leader called the father yeah comes up as this kind of like matthew mcconaughey trippy type dude and it was it was nuts because ubisoft wanted to give us a really rich experience of what the the game is like which is a pretty awesome but also what the game experience is like as well so they actually flew in the head of the cult in a helicopter so this dude comes out and he's talking about harvesting souls and all this kind of stuff and the sins of the world and some craziness. And uh, it was actually cool to actually have that whole setup there. But it got me thinking. It got me thinking about Far Cry 5. Um, got me thinking about the Far Cry series in general. I, and why, um, you, know, you know, one of the questions I wanted to ask was, okay, um, why should I actually play this game? For me personally, I stopped at Far Cry 3. So I got a chance to interview Dan Hay and I asked him that specific question. Question. You know, Far Cry 3, we, we built a, a really compelling villain with, with Voss, and I think, uh, you know, it was alchemy. We, we had some great writing, we had some, uh, we had some phenomenal acting, and I think that we created that face-off, a yeah. real gravity moment, especially when you think about how it opened. You're in the cage, and Voss is there with the phone, he goes, this is a nice phone, man, and you're like, and it's, it's just compelling, right? And we really leaned into the first-person camera, and I think that if you haven't played a Far Cry in a while, it's a great time to come back because we have a truly interesting, unique, uh, just compelling enemy with the father. We built not only one, but we built an entire family. Yeah. And we're really going back to that moment of intimacy, that first person camera of them stepping into your space. Mm -hmm. And them, you know, when you, in the real world, you look inside somebody's eyes and you kind of get a sense of what's going on behind there you can really feel it with the father. And he does raise a really good point. So I did like his answer there. And it actually showed while playing the game. Um, I can't show you too much, but I got a really good experience of that mindset of getting into Far Cry. And you know, the other thing I also asked him is what was the experience he wanted me to get from the game itself. Um, and uh, he had a pretty good answer. But if you played the Anecdote Factory of Far Cry 3 and you loved it, yeah this is bigger, there's more to it, it's more generous. There's gonna be so many opportunities for you to grab a guns for hire and grab two guns for hire, play in co-op, the entire game in co-op. You know, if you wanna just get into a muscle car and drive it down the road and feel that classic American experience, you can, but we're giving you the ability to fly. We're giving you so many systems that collide and rub together to create that kind of glorious anecdote factory that I think the people who love Far Cry are gonna love it and the people who've never tried it before, this is the best time to, to join the series. So besides all the trippiness of this world in Far Cry, right? Understanding what that is, understanding how a cult really functions, Far Cry and Ubisoft got a cult expert. Uh, his name is Rick Allen Ross. And I got to ask him a, you know, a couple of questions about, you know, how, does, uh, how do cults come to be, the mindset of a cult leader. And he gave me some really interesting insight. Joseph Seed is the most scary kind of cult leader. He's a cult leader that truly believes in what he's doing. He's not a cynical con man, just a manipulator. He's adroit at, at controlling and manipulating people, but at the same time, he truly believes in what he's doing. And when you have a cult leader that totally believes in what they're doing, there is no limit to what they will do. Yeah, uh, this dude was really useful. The reason I say that is that when you get to play the game, you get to see some really trippy stuff and craziness that goes on. And actually just showcases well uh, within the game itself. The gameplay is actually pretty solid. Now again, this wasn't a final build, so I'm not going to basically pen it and say uh, anything was bad or crazy because yeah, it just wasn't the final build, but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing the game. I enjoyed, you know, uh, walking around and doing different things. Now this game is massive. It really is massive. Like you can decide to just go fishing if you want to the whole time and not care about anything, but there are different aspects and different like areas on the maps that you can go and investigate. Now, of course, uh, you guys know uh, this, a dog in the game that's gonna be helping you out. His name is Boomer. 
and I got to save Boomer. We had this little obstacle course where we got to shoot uh, crossbows and slingshots. And I have to say, yours truly, you know, my African skills showed up and I was able to hit all my targets and I got to save Boomer. And here is Boomer right here. Yep, I saved him and he's doing well, but um, you know, he's gonna be in the game. You're gonna, see, you're gonna see him in the game. I didn't get to actually, play Boomer in the game with my gameplay experience, but I got to basically check out what the game is all about. Now, it's like I said, it's really massive, it's extensive. Uh, the gameplay feels really nice and smooth. There are multiplayer modes, different modes that add to, to the gameplay elements itself. And I was quite impressed with what I actually got uh, from this game. I think that a lot of people will be quite interested, especially for someone like me who, uh, Far Cry 4 was just not my thing. It's, it's a nice game, but really wasn't my thing. Uh, Primal, I just didn't touch. 3 was where I really, you know, I played the most amount of Far Cry and uh, spending that time and kind of getting back into it, I was like, okay, I can feel this. I like the way this is going here on this game. So uh, you, you'll find a lot of things that are, are, are pretty awesome in the game in terms of like some of the gameplay elements where you can also get, uh, you know, you're helping people within this town. You're liberating from, you know, the craziness of Eden's Gate and all the massive craziness of this game uh, that has uh, built into it. There's also a short film about Eden's Gate that Ubisoft decided to create. Uh, got to check it out. It was really cool. Uh, you guys will get to check out on March 5th. So. Uh, stay tuned to check that out. I think it'll be out on Amazon. Um, so it's actually a proper short film, not just some like cheap stuff out there, which is pretty cool. But I think the gameplay elements in this game will be something that people will definitely enjoy because I did. I had a good time playing the game. Besides, of course, running around the ranch and, and uh, just doing some goofy stuff there and enjoying myself. But I will say though that when uh, this game hits, hopefully I get to do a review for you guys and you guys can see it and I'll give you my final thoughts on what Far Cry 5 is all about. But um, till then, I'm gonna shut up and let you guys enjoy some of the gameplay I had within the game. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share, subscribe to the channel and Always enjoy entertainment. Now, time to watch me die in gameplay. Final collapse. We must prepare for what comes next. We must prepare for the new Eden. Know your Babylonians, all of them, gone. What have we learned? 